1969, things were not going well for the United States of America. The nation's pain persisted in the seemingly endless disaster of Vietnam and on the campuses of great universities and in the streets of major cities. The generation gap was as wide as ever and inflation seemed to be on an uncontrollable spiral upward. The nation needed something good to happen to it. It got something great. Three remarkable men brought joy and pride home from a distant place. Their voyage was shared by more than 600 million other residents of this planet. A worldwide audience that watched the astronauts and their wonderful machines on these wonderful machines. Television took us all to the moon and brought us back enthralled. This is the story of that trip and the television coverage that created, for a time, a true global village. This is a record of what we saw and heard of the epic journey when people first stepped on unearthly soil. The main characters in that drama known as Apollo 11 are Neil Armstrong, then 38 years old, a combat veteran Navy flyer and test pilot, Edwin E. Buzz Aldrin, Jr., 39, an Air Force Colonel, and Michael Collins, 38, a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. Good morning. Man is about to launch himself on a trip to the moon with the expectation of landing there. Man going to the moon here this morning from uh, this Florida launch complex aboard that Saturn rocket. The rocket will go, uh, will put the men into orbit 115 miles above the Earth for one and a half orbits, and then the third stage will put them on their way toward the moon. Shortly after that point is reached, uh, they will extract the lunar module from the uh, third stage rocket, and then they'll be on their own on the way for their three-day voyage to the moon. They will get there on a Sunday. Uh, they will make uh, the landing on a Sunday afternoon. And uh, after a 10-hour rest period, Armstrong and Aldrin are scheduled to set foot on the moon on early Monday morning, Eastern Daylight Time. We are going to have the great privilege during the flight of Apollo 11 to have with us uh, here at the CBS News Space Center uh, our very dear old friend and yours too, uh, Wally Shira, who has made a flight on every one of our, in every one of our space uh, craft uh, in the Mercury program, in the Gemini program, in the Apollo program. And Wally's going to be with us uh, for this flight to uh, give us uh, his expertise and a little bit of an inside look on uh, what these astronauts are going through in this most uh, historic mission. And it's just five minutes uh, to the historic launch of the Apollo 11 with all going well. Astronauts Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin sitting there atop the uh, great Saturn rocket in their command module getting ready for launch. Here's Jack King and launch control. Counting Skip Chauvin informing the astronauts that the swing arm now coming back. The test supervisor now has informed launch vehicle test conductor Norm Carlson, you are go, go for launch. Four minutes and counting, we are go for Apollo 11. Uh, the uh, engines that uh, generate that thrust uh, Three uh, combined for horsepower equal to 543 uh, jet fighter planes. Their launch is vehicle there. The submarine Nautilus. They burn 5,662,000 pounds of fuel, the equivalent of 98 railroad tank cars of it, the capacity of a small town's water tank. Liftoff, the noise reaches 120 decibels, and it's been compared to 8 million hi-fi sets playing at once. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three, we are go with all elements of the mission at this time. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. The members of the launch team here in the control center monitoring a number of what we call red line values. These are tolerances we don't want to go above and below in temperatures and pressures. They're standing by to call out any deviations from our plans. The vehicle starting to pressurize as far as the propellant tanks are concerned and all is still go as we monitor our status board. 
The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff, will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We just passed the two-minute mark in the countdown. T minus one minute, 54 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds in the counting on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. Guidance system goes on internal at 17 seconds, leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. We're approaching the 60-second mark on the Apollo 11 mission. T-minus, 60 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong just reported back. It's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 50-second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. Astronauts report it feels good. T-minus 25 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. trajectory so far, doesn't it, Willie? Very good, very good. That's, that's... It was so much different than any other flight that it uh, is hard, I think, this late date to imagine uh, our emotions at the moment. It really was, was something that, that had to grip you. It was uh, as if you could have stood at the dock and uh, and waved goodbye to Columbus. You, you knew darn good and well that, that this was the real history in the making. The thing that made this one particularly uh, gripping was that uh, there was that sense of history, that uh, if this was successful, uh, this was a date that was going to be in all of the history books from time evermore. Uh, it was, uh, everything else that's happened in our time was going to be an asterisk, really, uh, in, in the history books. That's the way it's going to be with this trip, and I think we sensed that at the time, just sitting there at the Cape and watching that great beast uh, get on its way, uh, that this, this was it. That great beast, driven aloft by five engines in the huge first stage, the bottom part, burned all its kerosene and liquid oxygen fuel in two and a half minutes. By then, it was 38 miles away from the launch pad and traveling more than 6,000 miles per hour. Its job was done, and it was released. So was a big adapter ring that had connected the first stage with the rest of the Saturn rocket. The escape tower was discarded. It would have sprung the astronauts to safety if there had been an